Hey y'all, it's my review for The Real Housewives of Miami, Season 5, Reunion Part 2. So we left off with Alexia making a very snide comment to Lisa, who was just trying to explain to Alexia how her actions come off. Everyone's kind of taken aback by this because why would you kick the girl who had the worst season while she's down? Like last season, nobody came for you and you went through a lot, right? So I thought Alexia was a real a-hole for that. Lisa takes it on the chin though. She says, that wasn't cool, but you know, I'm trying to tell you as a friend, I'm not attacking you, that this is how you can come off sometimes. Andy just decides to move on and asks Alexia, is there anything else that she's sorry for this season? And Alexia says just the comments that she made to Julia. Oh, and she decides to tack on a little half-ass apology for Gertie as well. Poor Adriana, she still didn't get that apology and she definitely deserves one. So they go on break and we get the behind the scenes of some of the ladies talking to each other while they're like reapplying their glam. And Alexia's like, look, they're all coming for me, bro. They're all coming for me. I mean, for good reason. And then we see Nicole talking to Gertie and she has my sentiments. Like she only apologized to Julia because she offended a whole population of people. And not Alexa going to Julia's dressing room trying to suck up to her. Man, I see right through that. This is so awkward right now because Adriana is in the room while this is happening. She deserved the apology just as much as Julia. Julia seems receptive to Alexia, but then she brings up Adriana, you know, bringing up Frankie, and you know Alexia don't want to talk about that. Production then shows us some unseen footage from that day of Julia talking to Alexia about Adriana and just trying to make the case for her that she didn't really mean it like that. I wonder why they took this out because we also see how Alexia completely dismissed Julia for advocating for her friend. Their conversation continues and Alexia is saying that her and Adriana have always been superficial friends. And then she brings up something Adriana did last season, which I do think was foul. She said she heard the rumor that her deceased husband was found with his lover or whatever. And then Adriana finally pipes up and now they're going back and forth. I can't even believe they were having this conversation with Adriana in a room like she wasn't there. Ooh, they are going at it. Alexa calls her a disgusting person and then Adriana drops the bomb that, oh, you outed your ex-husband after his death. Leah thinks you're disgusting. Leah, um, who was on the show prior. Does Leah even fuck with Adriana like that? Because this is before I even got on Miami. No shade to the franchise, but... Seasons one through three, it just wasn't for me. Now y'all know I'm not biased, but Alexa may have a point. I mean, so what if she outed him? Her ex-husband who's deceased was having an affair on her with another man. So that's her business. And if she decides to disclose it, I mean, that's on her. Like she has every right, in my opinion. They need to save this argument for the couch. Like where's Andy? Alexa then tells Adriana, I'm talking to Julia. This is Julia's room too. So she continues her conversation with Julia and Julia is just very calm right now. And I'm thinking because her wife is, you know, getting treatment or whatever, and she's in the hospital that she just has a different set of mind right now. And she's saying, you know, it's not all about peace and love, but just be kind to one another because we're going to have to film eventually. She doesn't say it like that, but that's what she meant. Alexia is having a Teresa moment again because I feel like she wasn't really hearing what Julia was saying. So she's saying like, you all are putting the mean girl title on me and that's not what I am. Like y'all are blaming me. And here come the tears and then Adriana, <laughs> Adriana calls her out again from across the room. Not you in these crocodile tears. Oh my goodness, my southern accent, crocodile. Crocodile tears. Kudos to the cameraman who is catching all of this right now. Miami is bringing it, y'all. Come on now. This is an A-plus season. I don't think we've had an A-plus season, including the reunion, in a while. Child, they are still going at it. We've been in the back room for at least six minutes now. It looks like Alexa's on her way out, but she makes sure to call Adriana the devil. Oh, that's finally over. The ladies are finally coming back to the stage and Alexa has been activated. Anywho, the reunion officially continues and now Kiki is on set. Soon as she sits down, her whole titty comes out. I mean, again, keep Kiki on this show. Bump her up to full time even. Kiki is just such a good friend of. Like I would put her in the same category as Marlo for what she brings to the show. Sandy's so talking about Kiki's funny whopper moment. And then we move on to Julia again. Um, 
and how she didn't know what school her daughter went to. I thought that was really weird, <laughs> especially considering she missed her children so bad. Now they're talking about her and her wife and how they went through a little bit of marital troubles on the show. And I knew when I saw the episode when she said that um, she doesn't want to do these dinners for two or whatever, I knew that was going to come back and bite her. Julie and I was just gushing about her relationship with Martina. It's so funny because I'm not a tennis person. I had no idea who Martina was. I'm not even going to try to pronounce her last name. So we're still behind the scenes right now. And these ladies are just going at it. Andy's like, save it, save it, wait for the cameras to turn on. So now we're getting into the ladies' sex lives, starting with Gertie. She says she upped it, you know, from three times a week to more. I mean, hey, they've been married for what? 20 something years, at least 25? Having sex three times a week, that's fine to me. Like when you're in a relationship, it's different. Andy then poses to the group, who thinks that they have the most sex? If I had to choose from this group of ladies, I would say either um, Larsa or Kiki, for obvious reasons. And speaking of Larsa, she says, I was married for 23 years. I had sex for four times a night. Come again, and again, and again? Wow. Okay, now she's saying she's never had a night off for 23 years. Like every night she's had sex four times a night. I don't know, I don't know about that. Andy is quick to do the math. So you had sex 28 times a week for 23 years. Sounds like hyperbole to me. Like Gertie brings up a good point. Oh, even when he was away at the games, y'all had sex? She's like, oh, well we had a private plane. Okay, Larsa, sure Jan. So now we're finally getting into Larsa since the attention's already on her about her relationship with, I'm not gonna say a minor, but Michael Jordan's son. And the reason why this is so weird is because Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan were on the same team. So you would think as a basketball wife, she's met Michael Jordan's wife and kids. So back then I'm sure he was six or seven while she was a grown ass adult. So according to Larsa, she says she's never met Michael Jordan until a few years ago. She said when she got with Scotty, that was his last year playing with Michael, so she never met his wife or his kids. Now see, all it takes is one super Bravo fan to go back and find a picture of Larsa, you know, with Michael Jordan and his family. That's all it takes. I ain't got time for that, but I know somebody else do. Andy then asked her, well, if it was your son dating someone much older than him, would you care? And she says she doesn't. I wonder if she would care if it was her daughter with somebody that's 20 to 30 years her senior. Andy continues with the messy round of questions and asks her, well, if you marry him, would you be Larsa Pippen Jordan or Larsa Jordan Pippen? <laughs> I think it'd be weird if she kept Jordan as well. And she tells us her maiden name. Maybe she should do Larsa Jordan Jordan or something like that. Or Larsa Jordan Jordan. Well, no, that, that doesn't sound right at all either. I don't know. I, I really don't care, y'all. Now we get to the rumors that Larsa hit people with throughout the season, like from Lisa to Nicole to uh, Julia. And Andy asked a messy question to the cast. Who here thinks that Larsa hits below the belt? The entire right side of the couch on Nicole's side raises their hand. Here go Kiki defending Larsa. Now, I don't think you're on the winning team, girl, but do you? Andy then goes back to season one where Larsa said some type of rumor about Marisol and her mom. Now I'm looking at this clip production dug up from season one and I'm wondering who is this woman with Larsa's name next to it? That is Larsa? Oh my God. The lips ain't the same, the nose, the ain't nothing. This is, she got a whole new head. That cannot be her. Damn it. See. I can't snap pictures from Peacock, so I'm gonna have to show y'all. Like, can y'all see it? Who is this? Just, just, just take it in, y'all. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That is some Frankenstein shit. It almost seemed like she got a doctor to transfer her consciousness to a new body. Now, on one hand, I do agree that some of the ladies did come for Larsa first, and she just bit back harder. More so like Lisa. Like Lisa took the first swipe and you know, Larsa came back with a bazooka. It is what it is. But you know, she came from Nicole in a dirty way as well as Julia. So the first rumor we get to is the one she said about Julia. And Julia said the reason why she denied it at first because this tea happened in January and Larsa told her last week. So 
okay, that's fine. And to double down on it, she said, well, I'm wearing his dress today, the man I kissed. And we see the photo and everything. So yeah, that's done. I didn't even think it was scandalous. I mean, even when we saw Martina's reaction, we knew there was no tea there. Lord, and now we get to the one about Lisa and Lenny having a mortgage. And come to find out, Lenny did have a mortgage. Lord, I remember those first two episodes. I was like, what is wrong? with having a mortgage. I'm so glad we moved past that. So now we get to the accusation that she was renting her home out to people. I didn't see the big deal in that because a lot of rappers rent those type of homes out for their videos and that's a cute coin to make. She said she lied about it at first because she didn't know if there was legal ramifications and she was still with Lenny. She didn't know that he was leaving her. I mean, I like Lisa, but we all know that she's a little bit of an airhead. Like she made a big deal out of nothing. So now Lars is saying that she doesn't weaponize the information she has against her friends when she literally said in a confessional during the season that if you come for me, I'm gonna come back at you harder. Like you're weaponizing that information. When Adriana points this out, she's like, shut up, put a muzzle on it. <laughs> ah! So now they're talking about hypotheticals. They're saying that what if Martina didn't know? You could have ruined her marriage with that information. I mean, we're talking about shoulda, coulda, wouldas now. They're just making an argument out of it. I don't really care. And here we go. Larsa versus Nicole about the you slept with every doctor in the hospital. We're talking about how the rumor started in the first place. It was because of a DM that Larsa didn't even get. It was the one Marisol got and she told Larsa. And Larsa was like, ooh, I'm gonna keep this in my back pocket. And she tried to use it against Nicole and it didn't work. So now we have a little revelation here from Marisol. She's saying that I've gotten even more DMs about it. People have been tagging me, the cast, even Nicole, like you've seen it. They've said that she actually did sleep with the married man while she was married, blah, blah, blah. Nicole then says, are y'all talking about the account that has zero followers that Larsa probably runs? As they're debating this, Larsa says, I don't have time for that. I have real jobs unlike you. Now Larsa girl, haven't we been here before? Haven't we? You sound fucking dumb when you say that to an anesthesiologist, bozo. Really? You think you're busier than Nicole? Taking pictures of your feet. Okay, now everyone is yelling at the same time. It's hard to make out what anyone is saying. Andy seems to be reaching his boiling point and says, you're all talking at the same fucking time. You know what, Andy? Screaming like that isn't very professional, especially to a group of women. Let my boss try to curse me out. Ooh, mm-mm. I love working for myself. Wait, so Marisol says no one thinks she slept with all the doctors in the hospital, but she said it. She said that, <laughs> literally. Again, we have Larsa sounding a dumb fucking fool saying that, oh, all you do is put people to sleep. You know people's lives are in her hands, like when she's putting people to sleep. Like you have to go to school for that. Like an anesthesiologist is a doctor. Oh my God, everyone just keeps talking and talking. So now Lars is saying, well, she judged me. She judged me. You see her husband, he called me a homewrecker. And he's like, but you didn't see that. But you still said that she was sleeping with doctors in the hospital. Like, how could you say you're retaliating from that when you didn't even know that existed? Like you're seeing this after the fact. Larsa, at this point, she's just trying to hurl insults at the wall to see what sticks. She's not making any sense. She's actually looking very dumb. Andy then wants to hear from Julia. Everyone is quiet. She isn't rah rah like the other ladies, but when it's her turn to speak, she does make some good points. She says, well, who do I trust the most in this room? I trust Nicole because she actually was Martina's anesthesiologist. I put her life in her hands. She makes a good point and circles back to Nicole's professionalism, which is why she was so offended by what Larsa said. Larsa can't seem to cop to that and she keeps trying to rephrase and backpedal and pussy popping on what she originally said. Larsa keeps trying to go back to what Nicole's husband said about her and Nicole said the reason why he made insults about you is because of what you said on season four about their child being a bastard, which is fine with me, I'll allow it. I mean, it's not like he stepped to her or cursed her out in person. He just don't have nothing nice to say about her ass. I'm team Nicole, I'm sorry. Y'all let me know whose side y'all on in this matter. Ooh, and now we get to the messy, most pettiest moment in Housewives history that I can remember. Nicole's hand delivered this invite to Larsa. Marisol, shut your drunk ass up. She's like, oh, no way in hell you thought of that. That's too clever. Really? You, you don't think she's smart? Do you know what she does? Like the ladies on that end of the couch, I don't know what crack they smoking. Why is Marisol so vocal about this? This didn't even happen to her. 
Like she was actually invited to the engagement party. And then for her to say she's the most clever one on the cast when her blood type is Tito's. Shut the fuck up. Oh, Larsa, here we go again. Like she's giving some type of full regret and then Andy just decides to move on. Thank you. I am tired of Larsa on this part too. Lord. Child, so they on break again. We get some more behind the scene footage of just Larsa and Nicole like complaining about each other. Side note, Adriana's hair is giving right now. She looks amazing. So all the ladies are returning to the set and we see Andy making an IG video saying that he just yelled at Larsa. Um, I'm assuming he's saying when he called her an asshole that meant yelling at her. Um, uh, I mean, it was a little unprofessional for him to like insinuate that she was an asshole, but he didn't yell at her. I was thinking he actually yelled at her like he said, you're all talking at the same fucking time. What a letdown, because I was actually expecting him to yell at her because she deserved it. So Andy's talking to Kiki for a bit. We found out that she's still single, which is kind of surprising. And then Andy asks her about the shape of his head or some shit. They then move on and Andy asks the ladies, did anyone suspect anything wrong in Lisa and Lenny's marriage? First, Gertie says there was an unaired scene from last season at a charity event where just Lenny was just acting strange. But that entire season, you could tell something was wrong because anytime they were on screen together, it looked like he despised her. As Lisa's commenting on that, the camera catches Kiki's face and it looked like she got something to say. Andy continues to ask Lisa about being blindsided because honestly, it is crazy that she said that she was blindsided by this. She had her head in the sand. So now he's asking about her sex life and she's saying that, well, two months before, like we weren't having it, but before that, it was like once a week or once every two weeks. <laughs> Alexia's face when she says this. Hell, everybody's face once every two weeks. He was definitely getting it from somebody else. So then Andy asked her about the Halloween party because they still had it even though they were in the process of divorcing. And she said, well, I really couldn't do anything about it. Like he really likes it. It's their house together. So she just went along with it. She said there was 600 people at their house. So then Kiki says that she was usually invited to those parties because, you know, she was a model in Miami. And then she drops the bombshell that she's heard that Lenny's been a cheater for a long time. And she knows models that Lenny has cheated with. And then we get the dramatic music and it's a to be continued, of course. That was a good part too. I was very entertained, especially by the backstage drama. Larsa definitely came off as the biggest asshole she has ever been. Um, what else can I say? Great gowns and drama. Great gowns and drama. I'm enjoying it so far. It's still an A for me. And next week is part three. Well, this is going to come out tomorrow. Today is Monday. So yeah, this week is the final part of the reunion. I'm wondering, like, what else can they talk about? Because I feel like they could have just added an extra 15 minutes to this. But we'll see. They didn't give us a, a preview of next week. I don't know why they don't do that on Peacock. Anyway, y'all, make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see y'all for the next episode. Bye.